implementation the nsq would be anchored in the national skill development agency nsda and will be implemented through the national skill qualification committee nsqc a permanent secretariat for the nsqc would be set up under the nsda for this purpose national skills qualification committee the composition of the nsqc shall have like this the chairman nsdc nsda there is a chairman secretary department of school education and literacy ministry of hrd the third one is secretary department of higher education ministry of hrd fourth secretary ministry of labor employ labor and employment five member of secretary planning commission mission directors from the three state skill development missions in rotations secretarial sectoral representatives as below director general nsda nsda for each sector that is being discussed the sectoral representatives would comprise secretary or administrative ministry chairman or ceo of the concerned sector skill council head of all regulatory bodies including where relevant ugc aict cbsc ncvt state boards etc in sector in the sector heads of two training institution one is government and one is private any other person or agency relevant to the sector like where more than one ministry or department is related to the particular sector a representative from each of these ministries or departments would be invited under this provision so that all concerned are represented the representative could be a technical person from an expert agency or body under the ministry dealing with the issue of training and skills in that particular sector in sectors that focused on skilling for overseas job markets representatives of the ministry of overseas indian affairs would be included the nsqc would be at liberty to set up specific subcommittees for addressing sectoral issues however all members of the nsqc representing specific sectors and listed under the group of sectoral representatives would necessarily have to be part of the subcommittees on the sector functions functions of the nsqf would be as under a approve and notify the nos and the qps prepared by the sector skill councils including job roles that exist across various sectors b approve the acc accreditations norms developed by the concerned sector skills councils for training providers in the sector c developed or approved the accreditation accreditation norms for non statutory certification agencies d based on the national standards for occupation or national industrial classifications or any other nationally accepted classification system to determine the determines determinations of sectors and approve the creation of additional sector skills councils including on the recommendation of the nsdc e prescribe guidelines for ensuring that implementing agencies including training providers address the special needs of the disadvantaged section of the populations including person with disabilities members of the scheduled caste and tribes obcs minorities women etc if review and revolve any issues disputes among ministries departments regulatory bodies regarding alignment of the courses to nsqf credit transfer etc the all matters recurring requiring cross sectoral approach such as credit accumulation and transfer recognition of non formal learning apprenticeship online and distance learning lateral mobility and bridge courses each coordinate and align indian qualifications to international qualification frameworks to allow international mobility i addressing all transition issues including developing suitable mechanism for recognizing and aligning to the nsqf all qualification predating and implementation of the nsqf any other activity as may be interested by the government map all existing certificate diploma degree and other courses available in the sector and identify gaps if any determine whether progression from one level to another should be allowed for a specific course or discipline example should a progression link be established between a nursing qualification and a medical one m map 
all the progression pathways so determined and agreed and decide how the progression will take place how much credit would be allowed for movement from one level to the next level on how and how such progression can be facilitated and determine progression links between courses and certifications that are granted by regulatory and or professional bodies and those are the currently unregulated identify and specify breach courses and process if any that would be needed to permit progressions from one level to another establishing and maintaining high standards for skill training in each sector provided at function a to j above would be have to the discharge by the nsqs itself and would not be de delegated to any sub committee at the state level the state skill development mission shall perform the coordination functions in the realm of skill development along with local ssc's industry trade association and all other stakeholders for the implementation of nsqf accreditation accreditation while national accreditation norms would be approved by the nsqc actual accreditations of training providers will be done by relevant regulators the identification registrations and accreditations of the institutes or training providers would be done through a mechanism determined by the concerned ministries and regulators in consultation with ssc's or industries as the case may be assessment and certifications assessment and certification will be done by the respective agencies of the government or private sector as is done now however assessment and certification norms developed by the concerned regulatory bodies ssc's or industry would be approved by the nsqc to ensure that outcomes conform to the appropriate nsqf level certificates issued post assessment will mention that the level of the nsqf at which it lies for implementation schedule in order to ensure a smooth transition the implementation time table for rolling out the nsqf would be as under one immediately upon the notification of the nsqf all other frameworks including nv nve qf national vocational education educational qualification framework released by the ministry of hrd would cease to exist and would be sub superseded by the nsqf be nsqf compliant training or educational programs or courses would be entitled to receive government funding on a preferential basis to after the third anniversary date of the notification of the nsqf a government funding would not be available for any training or educational program or course which is not nsqf compliant be all government funded training and educational institution shall define eligibility criteria for admission to various courses in terms of nsqf levels see the recruitment rules of the government of india and the public sector enterprises of the central government shall be amended to define eligibility criteria for all positions in terms of nsqf levels the state government shall be encouraged to amend their recruitment rules as well as those of their public sector enterprises to define eligibility criteria for all positions in terms of nsqf levels see after the fifth anniversary date of the notification of the nsqf it shall be mandatory for all training or educational programs courses to be nsqf compliant be all training and educational institutions shall define eligibility criteria for admission to various courses in terms of nsqf levels